Hi everyone, in this Magnus Billing video tutorial we will discuss the sign up form for clients. This feature is only available on the full version of Magnus Billing and not in the free version. Before the sign up form will work properly, we need to configure a few different options in Magnus Billing. The first thing we need to configure is the SMTP function. This is very important since the sign up form will not send emails if this function is not correctly set up. If you do not know how to configure this, please check the documentation on our website or the introduction video. The documentation also has a list of additional videos for other tasks related to Magnus Billing. When a customer registers, they will get an email with the sign up information. Thus, it's very important to ensure that the SMTP fields are set up properly. Otherwise, they will never get the welcome email and they will not be able to use the service properly. The next step is to go to the email tab. You can see the emails that will be sent and they can be modified. You must modify the link and replace the, your IP with your actual IP address or domain. You can add any specific data you want, such as your personal site or terms and conditions. You can see here that the link contains the Your IP field. You must put the IP address of your Magnus Billing installation here or the domain name. The email also contains various other information which you can modify. You can see that we have some variables here which are used in the email. The format such as last name and first name, username. Below there's a full list of variables that you can use in your email templates. In this example, the last name, first name fields are used. You can see that they're enclosed by dollar signs. These variables were replaced with the actual user's last name and first name. When I scroll down, you can see that we can use the username, password, email, name, last name, credit, date, and description fields in the email templates. The confirmation email must also be modified, specifically the Your IP field. The rest can be customized depending on your preferences. This is the email that customers will receive once they click the confirmation link in the original welcome email. This contains their login name, their password, and the link. You can see that this is a graphical text editor, so you can use different formatting options right on the screen. You can change the font, set bolder italics, change the color, and even include highlighting. For any changes to take effect, you have to save it and close the menu and then reopen the menu to see the changes confirm they are saved. We recommend always doing this. You can see that once I reopen the menu and click the email template, the changes are there. The next step is to go to the plans menu. Again, this is only available in the full version. It is necessary that the plan be active in the registry. You can see I'm disabling both now for when I try to open the client sign up form, you will see an error. I'm disabling these as a demonstration. You should actually have a plan active for the sign up form to work. You can see here that active and registry has been set to disabled on both of the sign up forms. Now when I go to the client sign up link, it gives me there a message that I have no active plan. The link customers will use will be your IP or domain slash mbilling slash index.php slash sign up slash add. We must activate at least one plan for the sign up form to work. So I will go back into plans. I will find the one that I want to use and I will set the active and registry field to yes and then save changes. You can also add initial credit to new users if you'd like. This field can be changed. Once I click save, I will attempt to reopen the client sign up form.
You can see that once I refresh the page, I have the client sign up form. If I activate multiple plans, the client will get a drop down asking which plan they wish to use. You can see now that when I refresh the window, there's a select a plan drop down. The users must fill in all of these fields, such as the plan, email, password and confirmation password, last name, first name, city, state, country, and telephone number. At the bottom, there's also a confirmation code to prevent spam or robot signups. I'm going to fill in all these fields with sample data right now. In just a moment, you will see that some fields, such as the password field, are validated. So if the user does not enter a valid password or value, it will give them an error message and prompt them to change it. Once finished, I will click Submit. You can now see that it gives me an error message that the password must be at least 8 characters. This is due to the validation. So I will now update the password and then click Save again. Now the user will receive the welcome email. You can see that the welcome email was sent. This is the email that we were editing earlier in the template. Any changes you would have made there would reflect in the welcome email. Now you can see that if we go to the users tab, the new user appears. You can also see that the user appears in a pending status. This is because they have not clicked the activation link that comes in the initial email. They must click this link to proceed with the sign up. Once they click the link, they will automatically be changed to the active status. We can also manually change them to the active status and then save the changes. We can now log in to test with this new client account to make sure that it works. You can see here that this is the email the client received. So now we will log in with the new client account to test. You can see that I will log in with the client's username and password. I am now logged in as that user. This is the interface that the user will see. They will be able to add credit. And they will also be able to place calls at this point. Now we will log back in as the admin user. A client or user created by the admin user can still use the sign-up link. However, there has to be a small change. At the end of the sign-up link, after the add option, you should add a question mark, ID equals, and then the username. This is good for resellers. Resellers would give out this link with their username ID at the end, and then it would add the accounts that are signed up using that link to their reseller account. So in this case, you can see I will use the reseller example. The reseller's username is reseller. So I will enter ID equals reseller at the end of the sign up link. So if I open this reseller link, I get the no active plan message. This is because the reseller account has not activated any plans in the registry. Even though the admin account has them active, the reseller account is separate. So we must log in as the reseller and then activate a plan.
You can see here that I've logged in as the reseller and now I've changed to activate and registry to yes for the plan. Now I will refresh the reseller sign up link and I will get the sign up form. Now I will fill in all of these fields and then click submit. You will see that for reseller accounts, the username and password is displayed right on the screen. An email is not sent. So this user would now have their username and password instantly to log in. Their account has been added under the reseller account. It has not been added under the admin account. You can see here under users logged in as the reseller that this user now appears. That will be all for this Magnus Billing video tutorial. Remember to subscribe to our channel. This video has been sponsored by Synops Global, www.synopsglobal.com.